O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Jesus stood among them and said, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened. Thought they saw a spirit. He said, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? The disciples missed it. They missed Easter. They missed the resurrection. They heard the word. The women came and reported to them that Christ had been raised from the dead. And yet they were in disbelief. They blew it off. And in so doing, they were filled with worry. Their minds were racing. Their hearts were troubled. And despair was winning the day. No more. No more. Because Christ is risen from the dead, life everlasting. Death is destroyed. And as Jesus rises, he drives away unbelief. He drives away despair and fear and worry. So he says, O oh foolish ones, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter his glory? Jesus raised from the dead. Jesus raised from the dead not to sit up in heaven in a rocking chair, but raised from the dead and he shows up to be with you. He shows up to be with his church, for he will always have his church. After all, Jesus has been showing up here at Zion for 130 years to have a church, to serve sinners, to give you his mercy. And how does he show up? With nail marks in his hands, with a riveted side pierced through by a spear, with holes in his feet. He shows up with his words and in his wounds. As Isaiah says, Jesus bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. This punishment brings us peace. By his wounds, you are healed. The wounds of Jesus bring healing. Healing to our broken lives. Healing to sinners. By his wounds, you are healed. He took all the wrath of God for you. And Jesus shows up and he says, Unbelief, be gone. Unbelief, be driven far from these halls. Be filled with believers. Be filled with faith. So Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace to you. Put your finger here. See my hands? Put out your hands. Place it into my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe the word. The word of God drives away unbelief. And the word of God opens our mouths to confess Jesus, my Lord and my God. We confess and believe in Jesus by the word and the spirit's power. The risen Lord Jesus Christ drives away fear and you're filled with joy. The risen Lord Jesus Christ vanquishes despair and fills you with confidence. Death and sin is destroyed. Life has come. True life. Real life. Life with meaning. Life with purpose. Life with God. It's in Jesus' words and it's in his wounds. So Jesus gathers you together as his church, to hear, listen, and believe. So let's study the Bible. No, really. Let's blow the dust off this thing. Let's study the Bible, and Jesus gathers the disciples around him, and he says, it's time for Bible study, boys. Let me teach you what this word is all about. I'm going to give you the key to rightly understanding the Scriptures. So are you listening? This is more important than bending your ear in to hear what E.F. Hutton has to say. These words are much more important. So listen. Jesus says, these are my words. I spoke while I was with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Minds opened. Hearts opened by the Spirit's power. 
And Jesus teaches us what this book, the Bible, is all about. The book, the Bible, belongs to Jesus. It's His. He dotted every I. He crossed every T. He signed the Word of God in His blood. It's His Word. And this Word of the Scriptures is all about Jesus. Whatever chapter you're reading, whatever verse you're reading, it's all about Jesus from beginning to end. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the heart, the core, and the center of the Scriptures. Crucified and risen for you. Jesus says it like this in John 5. You search the Scriptures. You think that by them you have eternal life. These are the scriptures that bear witness about Jesus. So, this is no Bible code. This is no mystic knowledge trying to find God in our feelings. This is no looking for God in all the wrong places of moralistic stories. Try harder to reach God. No works righteousness. Rather, Jesus crucified, Jesus risen, you're forgiven. All in Christ's words. He has been raised from the dead and he's in his word. His word, his word, his word. His word for you. These words are spirit. These words are life. They give you life. Christ opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Thus it is written, the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and repentance and the forgiveness of sins be proclaimed in Jesus name to all nations minds opened minds blowing and if I could put an emoji right there it would have the mind blowing when we hear that the scriptures are all about Jesus Jesus for you it's the opposite of what everybody else would say Jesus comes to give himself for you to serve you. And now, are you ready for the shocking part? Are you ready for the part that really kind of throws you back? Here's the shocking part when it comes to the Bible. You don't interpret it. You do not interpret the scriptures. Otherwise, we could like leave behind the parts we don't like and hold on to the parts we do like and it'd leave this book weak and impotent. You don't interpret the Bible. Rather, the Bible interprets you. That's the shocking part. The Bible interprets you and says, you're a sinner. Says you need a savior. Jesus is the savior. You need his mercy. A giant x-ray machine exposing our hearts that we need Jesus, the savior. Saving sinners like us. And the word comes and does its work. What the word does, the word repents you. The Word of God, by the Spirit's power, brings us into the state of repentance. And we've already confessed it together. I, a poor, miserable sinner. And we don't just simply mouth the words. No, by the Spirit's power, the Lord convicts us that we are sinners before the holy and righteous God. And we come clean. I'm a sinner, Lord. I'm the one for whom you came to forgive. Jesus says it like this. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents rather than the 99 righteous persons who have no need of repentance. Joy in heaven. Heaven is celebrating today because you confess your sin. And heaven rejoices because Jesus only comes to forgive sinners. Only sinners need the Savior. And by the Word's power, He repents you, and forgives you. So Jesus has been raised from the dead and he sends the apostles out to preach. To preach this all-powerful, all-authoritative word into our ears and into our hearts. To call you to repentance and to forgive you. Repent, believe, and receive. Jesus sends the disciples out like this in Luke 10. The one who hears you Here's me. The one who rejects you, rejects me. The one who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. So as you're repenting, as you're believing, as you're receiving, you're receiving our Lord's words. You're trusting in Jesus, and you have life. 
so the Lord keeps on sending pastors. Because we need to hear this word. And so the word keeps on going forth. The preaching office for your sake. As Luther rightly teaches in regards to the office of the keys. When the called ministers of Christ deal with us by his divine command, in particular, when they exclude openly unrepentant sinners from the Christian congregation and absolve the repentant sinner who want to do better, this is just as valid and certain, even in heaven, as if Christ our dear Lord dealt with us himself. Jesus is relentless. He's relentless when it comes to forgiveness. He's a bulldog. He wants you to be forgiven all for his sake. And he keeps on coming. He keeps on showing up Sunday after Sunday, week after week, year after year to forgive your sin. That's the Lord at work in his church by the resurrection power bringing you his word. So when the pastors do their jobs faithfully, they don't do it for their sake. When we serve faithfully, we are serving our Lord and we're faithful to the word, proclaiming it to sinners, forgiveness. So what do your pastors do? What's their jobs? Preach, admonish, reprove, correct, train in righteousness, baptize, bless, teach, absolve, Lord's Supper, and all these things are done at Christ's command. At Christ's command, at Christ's word, these things are done. And by the Spirit's power, He brings you peace. Hearts that are disturbed, no more. Minds that race, they're at peace. Because the word of God has been proclaimed. Acts 20. Pay careful attention to yourself and all the flock which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer to care for the church of God which he obtained with his own blood. A care of souls. And how your pastors care for the souls of the sheep is by the word of God. The word of God faithfully preached to forgive your sins. So you, you're to judge your pastors. Really, you are. And how you are to judge your pastors is by the word of God. And check us out. To see what we say, to see if what we say is right. To see what we say is true. But in order to do that, you got to know what the word says. You have to know it yourself in order to judge your pastors. So study it. Be like the Bereans in Acts 17. The Bereans were more noble than the Thessalonians. They received the word of God with eagerness. They examined the scriptures daily to see what Paul said, if it was true. So study it. Check it out. Blow the dust off it. And judge your pastors. And you don't judge your pastors by seats or dollars. It's not how you judge your pastors. Your pastors are not people pleasers, telling people what their itching ears want to hear. That would be unfaithful. And tragically, when it comes to many churches, they're run like businesses. And they view the elders like the stockholders. And you better do what we tell you or else. And there's a hire and a fire mentality. We hire a pastor, we can fire him. Be done with him. Treating the church like a business. That's not the preaching office. The preaching office belongs to Jesus. It's his. And there's only one way I'll ever speak of the church as a business. And it's like this. The church is in the forgiveness business. That's the only way I'll talk about this as a business. All others be gone. Paul tells Timothy, there's one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. He gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. For this, I was appointed a preacher. A preacher. So judge your preachers. Check us out. And how you judge your preachers is 
Did we hear the word of God today faithfully preached? Did we hear law? Did we hear gospel? Were sinners called to repentance and were they forgiven? Did Jesus show up with his words and in his wounds all for your sake? And when this takes place, we can all rejoice. We can all thank God because there the Lord is having his church, his way, all for your comfort. For the Lord says it like this, These words are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you have life in his name, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, that repentance and forgiveness of sins be proclaimed in Jesus' name to all nations. He's risen for you. He shows up here, and he brings you confidence. Confidence to face whatever comes your way. Sickness, disease, heartache, broken families. Whatever comes your way, you have confidence to face it because the risen Lord Jesus Christ is with you and for you. Here's the list of confidence in Romans 8. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, was raised from the dead, is at the right hand and interceding for you. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure, neither death nor life Neither angels nor rulers, neither things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Resurrection power, life and confidence, and Jesus shows up. Oh, he's going to show up next week. So come back again to hear more of our Lord's words, to believe more of our Lord's promises and to live in confidence. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Rejoice our Lord's gifts. Rejoice in his peace. He opens our minds. He opens our hearts. He most certainly will open our lips. So we confess him together in the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand for the confessing of the creed.